Hi peeps! Today I'm going to be talking about cheddar cheese. Uh, certainly in the UK, cheddar is the most famous cheese and cheddar cheese is made everywhere and of widely varying quality. So why? Why is it? Why is cheddar cheese so popular? Cheddar cheese was originally made in cheddar in Somerset. It's a cow's milk cheese. Uh, the process of making cheddar is called cheddaring. So you would separate the curds and whey. It's a hard cheese, as you can see, and the more of the whey, the liquid, that you can get out of the curd, the firmer your cheese is going to be. So you would like chop up the curds really small, um, put them into a mould, press them all together, and then there's a process called pressing, um, where it's basically what it sounds like, weight on the cheese to get rid of more of the water. And then the cheeses are matured in caves. Traditionally, there are a lot of natural caves in that area. There's the Wookie Hole Caves, there's Cheddar Gorge. Um, so traditionally, that's where um, cheddar was made. And how? Now, the process was um, standardised by Joseph Harding in the 19th century. And he introduced lots of things um, to do with hygiene. And also, um, he, the mechanisation of uh, the process, including the, the curd cutting. And this process, the harding process of making cheddar cheese, was taken all over the world. It went to New Zealand, it went to um, Australia, it went to the US. So this method of uh, cheese making, cheddaring, spread throughout the world, meaning that this cheese was made everywhere. It's um, a cheese that... It plays nice. You can put cheddar on a cheese board and it's not going to overpower anything and it's not going to be offensive. Um, it, it, it's a nice cheese that goes with a lot of other things. Uh, another reason of, of, for the fact that cheddar was made everywhere was rationing. Now, in this country, a lot of the milk was taken over to make what was known as government cheddar because cheddar, because of its consistency, it's very easy to cut into standard sizes and shapes. So a lot of other cheeses, more local cheeses, went out of production and when rationing ended, a lot of those cheese producers continued to make cheddar. Um, it goes with, um, well, if you're actually having a really, really good cheddar, which this one is, and we'll talk about that later, it can sometimes be um, a little bit cloying. There's, there's usually lots of sharpness and histamines um, with um, a cheddar cheese. So if you put it in a sandwich, you often need something else to go with it. So it does go really well with acidic fruits like apples, grapes, pears, tomatoes. They work really well uh, with cheddar. Pickles, good with a pickled onion and a ploughman's lunch. Um, Marmite goes really well with cheddar and chilli goes well with cheddar. So isn't it fortunate that Marmite have brought out this chilli Marmite, which they call dynamite. I don't know if it's going to be permanent or if it's one of the limited editions that uh, Marmite sometimes do, but that goes really, really well with cheddar. Mustard goes well with cheddar. Uh, I've got one here with um, walnuts in, uh, that goes really well. And this stuff I love, I don't know if I mentioned this in the video before, if I haven't, then it's a surprise. Vampire's Revenge, hot plum chutney, really spicy and lots of garlic in it, hence the name. With drinks, again, what's local goes with what's local. So if you can get a nice Somerset cider, this is a London cider actually. Uh, made from London apples, but if you can get uh, something from the same county as the cheese is made in, that's going to be really good. Um, drinks wise, I've got Chenin Blanc, which has sometimes um, those kind of apple notes to the flavour, but also something like an oak, oak Chardonnay would go well. Cheddar is one of the um, few cheeses that goes well with whiskey, um, and also if you can get some sort of like apple liqueur, that would go really well. So because cheddar is made everywhere, um, in 2007, um, some cheese producers in Somerset, Dorset, Devon and Cornwall got together and got themselves a PDO, a protected designation of origin, um, for what they called West Country Farmhouse Cheddar, um, which was cheddar that was being made from local herds of cows in those counties that were um, grass-fed and made in the traditional method. So if you're vegetarian, I don't eat meat because I don't like it, but the traditional methods of making cheddar include the use of animal rennet. Uh, and that, I, th I believe, is um, one of the qualities that means that it can um, qualify for the PDO. Also, traditionally, cheddar is made bound in cloth, 
well, I know you sort of get them covered in wax a lot, but the, um, the traditional farmhouse cheddars are wax bound and sometimes that uh, wax is washed in lard. So if you are vegetarian you, and you don't want any sort of corpses hidden in your cheese, probably avoid those traditional cheddars. There are lots of other ones out there. As I say, they vary in quality. Um, sometimes the milk is brought in from all over the show. Um, the milk is pasteurised, which is a way of kind of taking out the individual flavour uh, and making it all taste the same, like a standard flavour, whereas your, your West Country farmhouse cheddars are usually made from unpasteurised milk. So you should be getting um, all those local flavours from the milk. So this one is by Keens. Um, now, some, this isn't one of them, but sometimes when you've got a cloth-bound cheddar, you can sometimes get, um, where, the, where the cloth cracks, some bluing on the outside. Uh, blue is mould in cheese, you know that, right? Um, I'm going to have it with, I love these charcoal biscuits, but cheddar does go really well on just crusty bread, um, nice brown bread, wow, lovely. Uh, a good cheddar, you should be getting some flavours of um, mustard, um, you should be getting um, some like a, a mature cheddar gets lots of salt crystals in it um, um, which is obviously the lactic acid you can be getting hazelnuts in, in, a, in a good cheddar um, and it should have a sharpness it should like sting you it should have a bit of a sting at the end so I'm, I'm gonna give the Keens a try Obs. Mm. Mm. That's really good, and it's my oh, mouthful. It's really earthy, and the difference between these traditional farmhouse cheddars and something you would buy in the corner shop wrapped in plastic is huge. It's got this actually has a a, a, a lot of mustard to its taste. Oh, so I wouldn't actually put this with mustard, and it has got like a real sting at the end. It's got length. So you know, um, if you've ever had cheese when it kind of makes your lips tingle and swell up, I had a dreadful time once in France. I thought I developed a cheese allergy. <gasps> Can't really die. But it's like, it's the histamines in, in the cheese that, that would cause that. Mm. Yeah. That's a, that's a really, really good cheddar. A real length of flavour. The, the 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 sort of final mouthful leaves this kind of soreness as it goes down the back of the throat. It's so it's got a real like oh, you know, shudder to it. Um, it's it's not sort of something mild that you'd buy ready grated and stick on toast. It's really good. We're really worth trying. Um, so that's all, folks. I'm going to be getting on with eating this this cheddar and all these lovely relishes. Um, let me know if there's any cheeses that you want me to cover. And goodbye. <laughs>